Hello. Um, so in today's session, I plan to uh, make some changes here to the alien to make it a little bit more interesting. Let's take a look how, how it works at the moment. Um, so I don't like too much uh, enemies that move in a fixed pattern. Um, probably with the slimes is okay if you have few of them. You know, you have to have, you need some sort of basic enemy that it doesn't do a lot of stuff. So, um, because initially you may not have a weapon, so that enemy, I think it will work fine. I mean, it's a simple enemy anyway, it's only two frames, but still looks nice. Um, and then we have another enemy here uh, that when I was testing the um, the graphics, I just made it just the same. It, it just moves exactly the same as the as the other enemy. And I would like to make this a little bit more, you know, a little bit smarter, perhaps. Um, but before we do that, let's fix this. Uh, that blinking when you are hit is definitely not working right. Sometimes, see, you disappear too much. That's not what I would call blinking. So let's fix that. That is probably in the player code. Yeah. Actually, yeah, right. So, so when the player is hit, um, if the player was hit, when you get hit, there is a counter in was hit. Now, during that counter is on, uh, the enemies can hurt you. So basically you have a hit and then you're invulnerable for for some frames. I don't know how long. Uh, it is 16 frames. 16 frames and we're doing 16 frames per second. So that is 16 per 16, right? Mm -hmm. Up. So we update 16 frames 16 times per second. So this is 16. Well, you can do the math, but basically it's few seconds, it's not a long time. Um, and then here in the player draw, what I do is that if he was hit, and uh, what I'm checking at the moment is this variable provided by the library that I implemented. But basically, this is incremented in every single interrupt. So, um, it increments 15, 50 times per second. So what I'm doing here is, you know, when, I mean, it's just a way of, of so it, it, the tick ends in one, so it sees, if it's odd, then we return and we don't draw, so the sprite is off, and otherwise we draw it, so, you know, that's why it blinks. But I think this is not working properly because um, because this player draw is called in here as a part of the loop. So we did the entities, we did the player. This is the stuff we did for the map change. So it happens out of the update entities loop. Then we draw the map, draw the entities, draw the player, update any sound that is pending. And this setx weight is going to ensure that we have a frame cap in 16 frames per second at the moment. Because I'm using three as divider. So 50 divided by three, you get 16.6, something like that. So that means that the player draw is going to be drawn at 16 frames per second. Tops. It will be slightly, slightly less when we draw in a lot of stuff, but you know, that was the maximum. So it means that this stick here is not actually, it's not going to check things properly because it means that it may sync in a way that we may miss too many frames. 
right? So we can probably use player was hit instead of the tick. Actually, that could be a very simple fix, right? Because the player was hit is a content that is going to be so. Um, let's take a look. If player was hit, we can simplify this anyway. So if player was hit, then yeah, because. Yeah, we set the border to be red on the screen, and then after one frame, sorry, <laughs> one update, that is one every 16, so 16 per second, so it's a 16 hertz. So after one frame, we turn it back to black, so we don't want it to keep be red forever. And then we decrease player was hit. So I guess, we could be doing here like this oh, and that should be it I think let's take a look if that looks better so now the blinking should be yeah that's perfect isn't it Oh, I see what I changed this. So now the blinking is fine. So when we update the, so we, every time we draw, we draw one frame, then the next one that we need to draw, we don't draw it. But the problem is that it may sync with the animation. <laughs> so you may miss the frame where the player is walking, right? So that's why we lose the animation. Actually, we did. So that's why it's not showing. Anyway. Let's go back. So, yes. So, mm, just failing to do the update. Right. So, let's see. No, that would be too long. Right, so that's not really what we need to use, is it? So, so let's see how much, what is the, okay, so the frame, oh, I see. So we increase the wall frame once every, you know, 16 hertz, so every time we date, so there is no delay whatsoever. So it means that mm, and the delay is because if we stop yeah, because right. So you have a flag here that is the player was moved. So if the player was moved, we would take the frame and we set a delay. And if the player was not moved. We use that delay to keep the frame for two updates before setting the frame to zero, which is, you know, standing without the walking, uh, any of the walking uh, frames. So that's the effect of, um, so basically you walk and so you have time, see? You have time to see the frame a little bit before going back to normal, see? So, um sorry i probably left the screen over yeah sorry yeah yeah i think i had i had the <laughs> i had the emulator covering this area so basically yes so let's go back because in case you didn't see what i was talking about so basically this is a player hit we're using if it's um odd to skip the drawing and otherwise we draw but the problem we have here is that uh, that the frame is updated every date so it means that we the frame we don't draw we lose that frame in the animation and because the player draw is called in the same frequency as the date we can blink faster, OK? 
can blink slower. Right. Now the problem is that if we move one bit here, I think the frequency of, of blinking is going to be... Well, no, it's great. I like it. So basically, it blinks slower, but it means that it's never going to... Uh, it's never going to be it's never going to happen at the same time in the same frame type so what I want the void is that if you get hit and then you only see the frame standing when it's working and that looks ugly because the frame that is not being drawn is actually the one that is actually uh, uh, doing the walk animation so now because we stay longer off and longer on you have time to see those frames i think i'm going to leave it like that it looks it looks good to me so this one we're going to go in and it's going to be uh let me okay uh so Previously, it was matching the animation, so no, so linking show the walking animation, something like this, All right? So that's something I wanted to fix. So let's go to the to the alien right so the alien at the moment is quite simple I think so all in the day basically if there is life in the character I mean probably one thing I could be doing and I could be optimized is no and we still need to keep this yeah, because um, it, even when you die, there is a, a time that the character is blinking. So let's take a look to that. So basically, uh, so when you hit, you blink, and that's useful to signal that you're in, you you know you're invulnerable for a while. So that's great. And when you die. Oh, you disappear, right? I didn't do the blinking. So we could be doing a very quick optimization in here because we don't want to check the player if there is life, sorry, if there is no life or if it was hit. But what we can do, uh, and I think uh, the other current enemy we have has the same thing right so we can actually remove this here and also in here and then in the player when the player is dead in here because uh, the player just disappears at the moment we can just get the player out of the screen right for example just like this so the player is out of the screen and that will make that check faster because we don't really need to check for that I mean if we touch the player is because the player has you know is alive and in order to do that Let's see. So, without that, even when it's dead, it will register hit and change direction. But now it doesn't do that because the player is the player coordinates are out of the screen. So that's a nice. So let's see. Do we do that in any other place? 
No, we don't. So there are two enemies, so it has to be only that. Uh, so uh, let's. So that's a good optimization right there. So. Yeah. So. Check in. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, man. Yeah, sometimes. We, in this case, we avoid uh, I mean, it's, it's my own project, but it's going to read that, so I don't know anyway. Cool, so that was a good optimization. And so let's look back again into this. So it was hit, we skip that, it was right hit, and when then we change direction. And change direction is basically um, on, on the parameter. Let's look back to the to the entity structure. So these are the uh, the uh, different fields in the entity structure. So, and we'll remember that we use uh, a pointer to this because getting to a specific field in a pointer to the structure is a little bit heavy when you're doing that with set IT. So the compiler is not doing a great job with that. So here, basically uh, the parameter has, yeah, parameter has the, the direction which is you know you're moving left you're moving right and the for in the lowest bit and the highest bit we check if the movement is is horizontal or vertical so basically if we look at tiled here and we look at the alien. Um, boom, 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 boom. Let's see if we can move this. So there's a property. That parameter is one, right? So one means that that this is set, so it's horizontal, right? So if we remove this, then so I remove that. Sorry. So we'll go back to dial, yeah. So I removed the property, it's not here anymore. And uh, we run this. So the enemy now moves vertically instead of horizontally. So that's a way of controlling. You know, just enemy placement. You can do that. So let's do that. Um, ba -ba -ba -bam. Plus this. Right. So, so basically, it can move horizontally or vertically based on a flag. And then the frame controls what I'm going to draw, what frame we're we going to draw. And because it has only two frames, uh, based on horizontal or vertical movement. <laughs> so it's just moving between zero and one. So there is a delay here because the, the enemies move slightly slower than the player. Than the player. Um, so in this case, it's just half. So instead of 13, 16 times per second, it moves. Eight times per second and um, what else yeah it's basically you know so if it's um, horizontal and it mo it's moving to the right then increments X checking the if the map is block X 
otherwise decrements x and checks the previous style. Now, why I have the two functions, uh, is math blocks x and is math block y, is because um, uh, the the alien is 16 by 16, which is two tiles. So I need to check two different um, tiles in the map. And it's more efficient if I wrap that in a function that gets one the other and it checks. And actually it does more things because it checks if the tile is an open door or closed door. <laughs> so it, although, you know, it, you have to use two different functions, but it simplifies quite a lot and it's faster uh, because you decide already, you know, it doesn't have a branch. You're doing it already here. So, um, so this is the basic behavior. And I think uh, we're going to keep this behavior. Um, and what we're going to do probably is because we want to make the alien look smarter so we're going to check if the, if the player for example is close to the alien and then we will move and try to touch the player and if we don't detect that the player is next to us then we move back to to this basic pattern move movement. Um, now, this can work, but we need to think, for example, what's going to happen in some areas because I mean, I mean it's saying that the, we want the alien to be smarter, but it's not going to be as smart. I mean, this is a set AT. We have a lot. We don't have a lot of memory, so we can't really do th smart things like a star or things like that. So it's very likely that. Um, uh, if there is a wall, uh, well, we can detect that actually. So we can detect that the the player is the distance from the enemy to the player is smaller than something, include you know, and is there is no wall between the alien and the player. So we can use that, but still, I mean, you can you know, it can follow the player and then the player can do some movement and then get too far away or hide behind the wall. And then the alien may get stuck in between two walls or something like that, moving, looking silly. Uh, yeah, we may try to avoid that if we can. So at the moment, this is a alien update. Uh, And let me think. So, so I guess this could be the basic pattern. So we could be starting with this one, right? This here, well, it's going to be common for now. We can duplicate that. It's not a big deal. So we're probably going to have um, alien alien maybe follow tape um, that is very likely that it's going to yeah we need to check if we hit the player so this is going to be there I mean we can grab this in a function actually yeah we can say something like this so, so we use this less space yeah but we need to change the direction anyway and that code is not going to be there it's going to be mm, okay well the thing is that if you change direction it changed the it changed the the this flag and then it doesn't do anything else so okay fair enough we could be doing here It's been a long day. I can't type. So this could be doing something like this. And then so 
in that way we can do if well this is not alien common so we can do instead of this we can do if no uh, alien hit player if alien hits player then just go to change there and change the change the parameter and then it draws right so we can just say do it here and we don't need this anymore well we're not going to go change there but we can do for example we can do just change the parameter. This is what we want, right? So we can use that and then return. No, not return because we need to draw. <laughs> so at the end, it's going to end in draw the alien. Uh, I'm not sure what to do this. I mean, we can have a big else here. Which, it really doesn't matter because the compiler is going to do a jump anyway. You know, it will check this. If it's true, it will do whatever and then jump to a uh, label that it only does the draw. <laughs> So it's not going to make any difference. It's just that it makes cleaner the code. All right. So we definitely need a function to to measure the distance, right? And I think I did that in. Let's take a look to my code base so we can go and look at what I did in in kernel for the instance CPC and I think it's probably going to be somewhere here but I don't know I don't remember what is the name of the file so what did it call this Mm, I don't remember at all, to be honest. So I thought it would be something like common, but I don't have common in this one. So what could it be? Uh, well, I know that that the turret is using that code. So let's take a look. So it's calling uh, do, 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 do. Wow, no, it doesn't have any specific code. Look at this, it's very simple. <laughs> and no, it's not found because it's in a different project. So hmm, interesting. So this is very simple, you know, absolute subtraction between two. So and what I'm doing here is getting the difference between these two and these two. Wow, it's very simple at the end. And this ABS sub is probably, is, let's take a look. Uh, so, so, let's go and take a look quickly. No, it's going to, um, is that the macro? Oh, right. I put that in the spray library. In the spray library. Unbelievable. So let's take a look at that. 
but I think it's going to, I, it's going to be very simple unless I wrote that in, that in assembler. So, so mm, no, I didn't even bother. Look at this! Wow, very simple, right? Let's use that. Let's take a look to that. So basically, yeah, it does what it's actually saying. Amazing function, right? Can we do this with a macro? Maybe. Would it look better? So, so a b is going to be. Can we do this just like, just like that? No, because if we want to include that in a block, in the if, for example, in my cast trouble. So leave it, let's leave it like that for now. And I'm going to leave it in this file because I still don't know if we're going to use that in somewhere else. Otherwise, I will move it in the in a, in a file that we have with um, some some stuff that we might reuse, but it doesn't belong in somewhere anywhere else. So we can use it like that. So so alien follow date right, and the alien follow with date. What it's going to do is if layer x is larger than oh no, we need to do the delay bits here. So we need this because it still needs to animate and everything, right? So. So that is going to be the same. And then this is going to be very similar. Yeah, okay. So if player X is larger than the X of this entity. Otherwise, it can be equal to, but it's very unlikely because if it's equal, it means that we're touching the player, and if we touch the, if we touch the player, we change direction. So, so we probably actually, uh, actually, that's interesting. Um, yeah, we'll see that. I mean, if we hit the player, we probably need to move back to the pattern base or we need to go away because otherwise it will continue trying to hit the player and we don't want that I don't like the enemies being on top of the player constantly so I like hit then move away and attack again something like that but for now we can leave it like this although it's not going to be the way I want so we're going to assume that otherwise you know it's going to be the other case and before you know if px is, is larger then we need to do this if map is blocked do we need to do this yeah we probably do if map is blocked then otherwise and i think we're going to do the go to and make this simpler because we're going to change direction somewhere, right? So, um, I think we, I'm not sure if we can, it will get confused with this label, although it's in a different function. I'm not completely sure how this compiler did to that, or what is the supposed behavior. So we're going to have a different name. Um, so in here, if it's not blocked, Increase, otherwise go to yeah, we can do that. Uh, otherwise, you know, so if px is larger, oh no, I did the opposite. Well, if it's smaller, do this. 
Otherwise, do this. And do we really need to take care of the the direction we move in? Mm, not really, but it could be a good thing, right? So this is in this case is because I param the first bit is zero. So no, it really, it really doesn't matter. If it's blocked, then we don't do anything. And if it's not blocked, we don't do anything. And this is not going to be needed because instead of changing direction, we need to go back to alien update. And that is going to be the, do you remember that? that global variable, that's the global variable that is used in here in uh, when we go through the entities in the update entity loop so the current entity has all, is always it, uh, it it, iterator, iterator so we're going to go back to alien, alien update and then uh, so exit so so then follow date and then exit something like this so I mean we still want to draw this frame right so we do the frame and we exit and next update will run this function we still haven't. We still need to write the code here to move to use alien follow update, right? So we can move, move. The wise, I mean, the frame is always going to be uh, is going to be changing away. So even if it's a wall, it will you know it will work, but don't move, just touching the wall. So this deals with the X and. Now, do we want to move in diagonal? Maybe. Let's try. I mean, if it doesn't look nice, we can change it. But, so, if py is less than iti, then it's going to be the same thing, but for the for y. So, we using yeah. So it's going to be this one. This one here and this one here. Something like this looks okay. So in this way, I mean this follows the player. Just like like it is. And if it's there is a wall it will just stay in place and then if we hit the player we move to alien update and this is not really what we want uh, it is the player distance which is is going to return abs so um, idx player x abs so id y dy maybe does it make sense to do that Well, we see. I mean, it may reduce a little bit the space, I guess. So it doesn't have to include that, but it will be slower. It definitely will look cleaner, but we can change this with a macro, perhaps. We can do 
time by distance and then do this stuff. I don't know, let's do it right And then we can change the mic. Right, so blah blah blah, we move, we move, do do do, and here we can say if player distance is less than, let's start with something like 16, maybe, then uh, no, this is not what we want here, but we're going to reuse this. So if player distance is lower than 16, then what we do is the id update equals to uh, alien follow date and then go to change there not really it's more like <laughs> this is a little bit extreme, right? Yeah, I mean, we could be putting the alien draw and then do a return. That would be more or less the same, but knowing that the uh, that the compiler is going to do something like this, I'd rather control the operation myself. So I know that I want to draw that and exit so I don't have another exit around here. They just, just have a jump. Right, so this the, the distance is less than 16, then we move to update. And then if the distance is larger than, for example, 32, then we go to where we were. I mean, this should be doing something at the moment. Hopefully it will compile. Yes, it does. So let's take a look. Well, yes, it kind of works. Actually, it works too well. It's following me. Yeah, it still follows me. <laughs> See, that that's a silly alien. Which is a little bit unfortunate. Yeah, but we said that we're going to detect if there is a wall, right? So at the moment, we're not checking the wall. Actually, let's do something because that's not a nice way of testing this. Let's get this alien into the other map. Uh, sorry, entities here. So we have more space and this slime is going away. So let's put it here and then let's move it vertical for now. So we can control what's going on with the distance. See, let's get the gun. Although I don't think we're going to get hit. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Okay, so there are two things that we need to change. First of all, um, it should be facing us, right? And it's not doing that. And it's actually quite, it's quite fast. Well, I think it's fine. It looks fine to me. Right, so two things, first of all, um, when we are following the player, we should be changing the parameter, right? So, um, parameter, if parameter is 1, then we go to x, right? So, so, so we set it to 1 here, and we clean it here. And 
for y, I guess it's the same. Yeah, it's the same. So right. So at least in this way, it should face us when it's running after us instead of what we were looking at before. And yeah, I mean this is not a brilliant way of testing it, but we don't have the start flag we used to. Oh, right, so we're going to do something, right? Because it's, it, when it moves up and down, it's still facing uh, left or right, because I didn't want to use that many frames. So what are we going to do is to do the Y first and then the X. So in that way, we know that being x the one that has preference even if it moves up and down it should be looking at us currently i see yeah that's it better right that, that looks nice <laughs> this reminds me to the <laughs> to the death uh character in uh, Gauntlet, look at this. Stop it! It's running my life. See, well, we don't want that to happen to be on top of us like this. I think that's not. Well, yeah, one one thing at a time, probably. Uh, right. So, right. So, player distance. These values are completely. No, right, so let's try something smaller and 16. Well, 16 we know is too close, so 10. Is this correct? <laughs> yeah, it looks fine. And then you can see us and it works so that's fine let's run and then try to no yeah we're never going to be there's not enough space here to run away from him right it's getting close so let's do something uh let's 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 just let's, let's make this better for testing so let's put here something so we can run around it maybe something like this and then maybe this. yeah so yeah oh. Let's see. Yeah, that's going to be useful because I expect that <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> that looks rubbish to me, really. So what we're going to do is Okay, so this is quite cheap. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, it didn't. It didn't work like that uh, in in um, in kernel. So maybe we did a peekaboo at the code, and we take a look to the code, but. Uh, I didn't look at it properly because that's not how it works. Uh, yeah, I mean that's that's what it's actually doing. Yeah, 
Hmm, it's confusing. Oh, look at this! Target in range! Exactly, that's what we're looking for. So... Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, that's what we want. Because it's not just... Yeah, target in range actually checks that there are no walls. So, let's take a look at what I did in there. Um, shooter. So... Could it be that it's in, in here? No. Did I put that? Maybe the player? No. Oh, man. I don't remember. Oh, in bullet. Okay, it makes sense. Well done. So let's take a look to, uh, to what targeting range is doing. Yeah, because in 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 the dawn of kernel, um, drawing things is quite. Oh man, it's a large file. Right, drawing things is quite expensive. So, oh look at this. Right, I see what I did here. Mm. Wow. Right, so what I did here is so basically I get the distance and if it's just less than whatever, yeah, return one is in range. There's nothing I mean it's too close, just fire. Then this is because we can shoot in different ways. So if it's horizontal only, then ah, if it's not horizontal, then we don't increment increment x. If it's yeah, so basically what we do here is we get the number. And well, the difference. So this is an it's like a it's a vector, right? So what we do is while it's not bigger or so well so if the px is larger than x, then we increment one tile. So if the map is blocked, then it's not in range. Otherwise, we return one because we can actually reach it. So and we increment one tile yeah I see and dx dy is to control the distance right well we can do that actually because that's what we want player in distance right so let's take this and we can adapt that uh, here to some extent. So player in distance, right? So it's going to use some local variables, although that's not very efficient. X Y dx dy so yeah because why do we use that as a oh, because we use the increment yeah and then you have increment x increment y then yeah we keep this then Yeah, that's fine. It's less than two. It's in distance. That's fine. We don't need this. And then if px, yeah, we're going to go increment x. Otherwise, we're going to decrement x. 
So we go from the so went from the enemy to the player. That's fine. I don't understand why this is not ah oh, yeah because until we one of them touches that's fine we keep that it's map blocked then we had the problem here <laughs> because which one are we going to use x or y we don't know we probably should check both of them so Ah. Well, we can split both here. So, and we probably, this is following a different, oh man, this is awful. So, no, I don't think we can have fix this now. Yeah, because yeah, that project was using probably tabs, something like that. So, so the formatting is now funny. See, that's why you shouldn't change your mind. I mean, if you choose to use tab, you should die using tabs. Never move to use spaces. But there you are. Uh, Anyway, stop. Actually, I think I have, I can format. Yes, excellent. So I don't know why I didn't use that before. Cool, so this is what we need to do here. So if we move X, then we check X. And if we move uh, Y, we check Y, but then we are looking at the distance, right? So it would be nice if we can check. Um, um, player inside. And then we can use Distance and then a player inside if player is not inside then we return you know otherwise and I'm going to type again the thing So, fire x, id x, now it was abs, so, yeah, so like that, and abs, dy, right, so the page is not inside, we're never going to reach that and then it will go to a new date and it will move to overflow and increase in cost of combination in 60 because just to make things less efficient this is a sign variable uh, what which function is void? This one. Uh, what? Okay, now you should combine. And let's see if it works. Let's get the gun, although we're not going to use it. Right. So it's not fully one, fully us. Yeah, it goes through there. Ah, it's not following us because why? Oh, right. 
is because the distance is in tiles maybe well it works slightly better but now it's not exactly what we want what is the size of this it's the size in tiles So it's checking that dx is 1 and dy is 1. All oh, right, because we divide them by, by 8. So we will move to use tiles. And is map blocked is using tiles? No, it's not using tiles. All oh, right, yeah. Mm. So this is how many tiles we going, the distance in tiles is this. So it means that when we are oh it's distance in tiles. Okay, let's take a look. Where's the distance in tiles? Why there is a wall here? Why is it still trying? I mean there are three no there are, there are more six times between us you shouldn't try right mm. what's going on Actually, this could be improved a little bit like this. This is saving just one byte. There you are. We're not completely sure. Not completely sure. I mean, if we. Uh, if, we if we comment this. Is that the code that is actually causing the trouble? It may not be. And again, we have to go far away to run a test. No, that's not the problem. And actually, why it keeps going up and down? Hmm? Why it keeps moving like that? I mean, it's not too bad. I have seen worse games doing that, but I still don't understand what goes up and down. When, I mean, if it matches, if it's matching the. Oh, right. Wait a second. So, player distance. So, we go to a little date, and then the distance is less than 8. Yeah, but it's not, that's not happening because there is a wall. So, that's not it. And actually, this is not really necessary, but it just helps because if it's too close, we don't need to do. I mean, there's no space for a wall, right? Actually, this could be three because if it's right now, it can be two. Yeah, no, it has to be that. I mean, one tile. There's no wall between us. Then if we are this is one tile. So, not completely sure. Oh, okay. I see what could be here. What could be the problem? That if dy is equal to zero. Well, no. If dy is equal to zero, then it never changes, right? So, why? Oh, 
I see. Because this is not pixels. This is tiles. Uh, right? We move, we, move, we move tiles, not pixels. PXN and Y is tiles. Is tiles already. That, that's why the player distance we calculated here it, it felt 16. 16 is not. What, what's going on? Uh, it's tiles. There is tiles. So bean tiles. Wow, this simplifies quite a lot of things, right? So in that way, we come here and we get the key and we go to see the, our friend here, Mr. Alien. Yeah, it can see us now because we are behind the wall. Shall we get close? Yes. Yeah, there's a wall, so it goes away. It go, moves back to the pattern base movement, right? Um, well, that was silly. <laughs> Again, what do you want to do things right the first time? You can waste a lot of time trying to find the... Okay. Oh man, why you don't come to see us? There must be a problem here. Yeah, but basically, it's number of tiles. So ten tiles is quite a lot. So I would say. So we say in. Less than eight tiles, this could be ten, and this could be sixteen. No, we thought sixteen it was a lot, right? Twelve. Two tiles difference. Yeah, but it makes it changes quite a lot now. Right, let's leave eight on ten. It changed quite a lot now because we now take into account that it has to be inside. So if I don't see the player, you know, if the enemy doesn't see the player, it won't go after the player. So uh, boop, 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 boop. this looks okay, I think. So this is Y, this is X. Y is when we change Y, yeah, and X is when we change X. Looks okay to me. Hmm. There we go today. Oh, let's take a look again. Hmm. It looks pretty close, but it's not yet what I want, so. So you can see me now. So we see that when it's in line, it's not working. So here it works. Now it's working now. So, so maybe there is a visibility issue here. Yeah, there's a visibility issue in there. So I think what is happening is that somehow, yeah, we should go through that because it just followed me, right? But now it's stuck. Why are you stuck? Come with me, follow me. No, that way can't, but the other way can. So, Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> yeah, I don't want it to hit me. So, come on. All right. Yeah, so that way can go, but not the other way. Why is that? So, I guess it's stuck. And I think what it may happen is that it's moving to the to the alien update uh, function, and then 
because the distance is short and it can see me comes back so there is an issue here I think so plus two plus one hmm. so there is an issue here and it could be that we are so we are taking into account the the top the top left tile which kind of makes sense because his map block is going to use those right so x will check x and y and y will check so yeah so when you move in in the x you're going to check vertically two tiles and when you move in on the y axis you're going to check horizontally two tiles that's what it's this doing really see this one checks x and x plus one and this checks y and y plus one so that looks okay uh, and actually it's fine that we actually subtract or add before checking because it really doesn't matter those values are going to be thrown away anyway so when player is inside then we continue here and then so it could be something here that P Y is larger than it has to go up. No, but I mean this code this keeps going. The only one that can actually change the date is when he hit the player or the player distance is larger than ten. And we know that at that point the player distance is not larger than ten. The only way that the player distance can be larger than 10 is if the player is not inside. And if the player is not inside, the only way that can happen is because one of these two here fail. And why is failing? I don't know. I think we're going to leave it here for today. Now we'll think about this. I mean, it's def that's definitely something funny going on in here. So this is what's happening. Uh, why is this failing? I'm not sure. Which one is the one that is failing? I'm not completely sure because it could be the, the X movement on the, of the Y movement because if one of them fails, we move to update. Then update, basically, cost of all the, let me think, can this? No, not really. Can it be? Why is actually moving down? No, it should, it should stay in place if that happens, right? because we always draw, but we don't increase X or Y unless you get in here. So it could be that this is not the problem, maybe? No, it has to be. That's the only way we can leave this. Uh. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> That's, that's stupid. Of course. Can you say it? Oh. Yeah, because if it's equal, we don't move that x, that axis, right? So this is nothing else. This is more like this.
Now the question is why it works in one side and it wasn't working in the other one. But that's this is definitely the problem. Let's run a quick test and we can call it a day because I'm tired <laughs> and that's why this doesn't work. Right, it's following me. Come here. Hey! We got the stock. Why you get a stock? You shouldn't be following me because oh I see what is the problem. Because when it stops following me, it goes to wherever the <laughs> value of param it is. So it could be that it tries to go in one pattern that there is not a space for. Well, we knew that was going to be a problem, a problem, right? See, it's trying to go up and down and there is not a space for that. I mean, that's easy to fix, I guess. Okay, let's try to fix that very quickly. So, um, ba -ba 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 -bum. so follow date. So we're going to leave here. Then we can check if it param. So this is the one that controls if we go up, down, or left, right. So if that is one, that's in the X, right? So what we can do here, if that's the case, if is map blocked X, ID X, ID Y, ID X, minus one. So basically what I want to know is if we're going to move left, right, but there is not a space for move to move it. So we go the other way. Which is probably good enough. I mean, for an 8 bit game, right? <laughs> right, that's two. So, if that's the case, then. Then we add 127. So, we set that to zero. Otherwise, we check the other axis. So in this case, if this is block y, block y, this is minus one, and this is plus two, then we set the byte, the bit that we want. Right. So in this way, we shouldn't have that problem anymore. Although it's, a, it's difficult to test, really, because um, you know, it happens kind of randomly. So anyway, just follow with me. Come on. So let's get into an arrow passage and then go away. Yeah, exactly. So it's never going to be up and down. We sped that. Let's take a look. Yeah, it's going left and right. It's never going to be stuck now up and down in that because there is no space to move. Yeah, this is starting to look really nice. I mean, not the code, especially. <laughs> but now that we have a... Now we have a working version here, which is a little bit messy. Then um, we can clean this quite a lot. Uh, we can actually... I mean, this is the current size. So this is the current size in bytes. Uh, sorry, we let's say how how much is this? So so this is the size minus minus this no minus this. Well, <laughs> it's not huge, but 
I think we probably we can improve this a little bit. I mean, 700 bytes just for that behavior. I mean, we can reduce that in the future with other enemies, but um, I wonder if this is too complicated for what I want. I mean, it looks great. I mean, definitely this is, this is really good behavior for for that enemy. I really like that. I like, I like how it moves and the fact that, you know, it can be a quite interesting enemy because, you know, I mean, this is only one, but if I put, okay, let's try that just before and in the session. So we go here. I mean, this can be quite interesting if we have like three of them, for example. And then um, yeah, what, 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 you go, you get into a room with this, with your blaster that needs some time to recharge. So it's not like you're going to. So this can be quite interesting. See. That it it forces you a little bit to move around. How many enemies are there? Are two of them. Oh, see, that's another thing I probably need to change. I don't like enemies that overlap, not at all. So mm. that's something I may need to change. Well, obviously, we still didn't change that. You know, the enemy on top of you. Although it's not too bad, I might leave that. It's quite interesting how it looks. It doesn't look too bad. Anyway, so that's enough for today. I think uh, next session, or maybe I I will do that off the record. I will look at this a little bit, see if we can clean this a little bit or make it look nicer, maybe. Um, then, Probably, 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 I think, yeah, the problem is that checking that we don't touch another enemy can be quite tricky because that's quite expensive. If every enemy has to check for any other entity before moving, that's quite expensive. So I'm not sure if it's going to be worth doing. Well, I can find a different way. Uh, so yes, clean up this will be interesting. I'm probably going to move this and this to a different file because they probably don't belong here. And the same thing for this one. Maybe player distance can include this one. Although this can be useful if we have it independently, for example, if there is an enemy that shoots and we don't want the enemy to shoot if if he can see the enemy because there is a wall. Those are options. Anyway, I will think about it for the next time. But for now, that's all. Bye bye. See you next time.